Joining me now, Mark Regev, senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He was previously Israel's ambassador to the United Kingdom. Mark Regev, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Uh, let's start with the tragic situation. To be with you. Pleasure to have you on. Let's start with the tragic situation of the hostages. Uh, hostage taking, a clear war crime by Hamas, and those hostages, of course, need to be released. Are we any closer to the release of any more hostages? We surely hope so. You know, uh, Hamas, as you've reported, uh, has kidnapped some 240 people. Uh, unfortunately, today we found the body near the Shifa hospital of one of the hostages. A woman uh, from Kibbutz Berry, her name is Yehudit Weiss. She was 65 years old, a mother of five. And uh, so she's no longer a hostage. She was dead. And the information we have is when she was taken into uh, captivity, when she was abducted by Hamas, she was alive. We've now found her body. It was one of the results of the military operation today. Of course, getting the hostages out remains one of the focal points of our military operation. And we believe that by uh, uh, expediting the military pressure on Hamas, we're actually uh, getting closer to the so, release of hostages. So was it a mistake, in hindsight, and that's tragic news to hear about this poor woman, was it a mistake for Prime Minister Netanyahu, your boss, to have reportedly turned down a deal at the start of this conflict that would have, that would have seen Hamas free women, the elderly, kids, in exchange for a five-day ceasefire? Isn't that why so many of the families no, of the hostages are angry with your government? Sorry, uh, Mehdi, that's just disinformation. There was not a real option uh, for a deal before the ground operation. It was looked at seriously, but Hamas put nothing on the table that could be worked with. And so that's just not correct to say there was an option. We might have an option now for a deal. I can't tell you for sure. We might okay. have an option because the military pressure on Hamas is maybe making Hamas understand that if uh, they want a temporary ceasefire, they need to release hostages. Without that, we're not going to have a temporary ceasefire. So we're hitting Hamas hard, and maybe the military pressure will force them to consider how they look at the hostages. Look, we can't expect them to release hostages because they're suddenly going to become humanitarians, right, Mehdi? They're obviously so not. They're brutal, they're brutal, no vicious one, terrorists. And, and no they'll one, only, no they'll only release hostages be... when they're... Yeah, they'll no only one's... release hostages when they're forced to do so. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the military pressure. We are nearly six weeks into this bombing campaign and ground invasion. The Gaza Health Ministry says Israel has killed more than 11,000 people in Gaza, including the a Hamas, number of The Hamas children. controlled. Uh, let, the me, Hamas, let me finish my question. Let me finish my question. No, but, no, but, no, but you, have to, you can't say that. No, but I, you said you have to say the Hamas controlled the Ministry of Health in Gaza. You can say that. I don't have to Please. say what you asked me to say. More than 4,000 no, kids, true. they say, That's true. You don't killed. deny that? Mehdi, I, I'm you not don't deny that it's the Hamas controlled? I'm not and the health can I ministry is controlled by Hamas. Let me but, finish but, my question. Can, but please tell the viewers the truth. That information yes. is provided by Hamas. OK, and that information, we'll come back to that information, but you've got dead Gazans. The American government say maybe more than 11,000. You've got a record number of journalists killed, according to the CPJ, a record number of UN workers killed, according to the UN. And yet Hamas still exists, is still capable of firing rockets into Israel, still has the hostages. You haven't found their big base under the Shifa hospital either. Your critics say that shows this war is a failure. I would argue that's all incorrect, Mehdi. We're hitting Hamas hard, and they're feeling the pain. We just discussed that a moment ago. Why are they maybe now considering a, seriously a hostage release? It's not because, as I said, they've become humanitarians. It's because they're under a very, very massive military pressure. Look, this operation is not one that we wanted, obviously. This, this war was forced upon Israel in the terrible attack of October 7th, and, and we are fighting back, and we will destroy Hamas. We'll dismantle their military machine and we'll take apart their political control of Gaza. That's good for Israel for obvious reasons. We don't have to live in fear of terrorists crossing the border and killing our people, and butchering our children in the middle of the night. But it's ultimately also good, and I hope you agree with me, it'll be good for the people of Gaza who deserve better than this terrible authoritarian well, extreme Hamas regime. The people of Gaza are still alive. As I say, more than 11,000 people dead, reported dead, 4,000 children. I just want to pull up on the screen. Hamas. Hamas is numbers. You say Hamas is numbers. I should point out, just pull up on the screen. In the last two major Gaza conflicts, 2009 and 2014, the Israeli military's death dolls matched Hamas's health ministry death toll. So, and the UN human rights groups all agree that those numbers are credible. But look, your wider point is true. Can I challenge that? Will you allow me to challenge that, please? Can I just briefly, challenge that? Can, I'd briefly. like to challenge that. 
I'll try to be as brief as you, Asif. Uh, th those numbers are provided by Hamas. There's no independent verification. And secondly, more importantly, you have no idea how many of them are Hamas uh, terrorists, combatants, and how many are civilians. Hamas would have you believe that they're all civilians, that they're all children. And here we have to say something that isn't said enough. Hamas, until now, we're, we're destroying their military machine, and with that, we're eroding their control. But up until now, they've been in control of the Gaza Strip. And as a result, they control all the images coming out of Gaza. Have you seen one picture of a single dead Hamas terrorist in the fighting in Gaza? Not one. Is that yeah, by accident, have, or is that because Hamas Mark, can control Hamas Mark, can control the information you asked me a question coming out of and you Gaza? You said you would be brief. I, have, I haven't. You're right. But I have seen lots of children with my own lying eyes being pulled from the rubble. Uh, because so, they're the pictures Hamas wants you to see. Exactly my point, they're, they're, dead, they're, they're the pictures also, Hamas wants you to see. But there are also people no, that your government has uh, killed. You accept that, right? You've killed children, or do you deny no, that? No, I do not. I do not. I do not. First of all, you don't know how those people died, those children. Oh, wow. First of all, we don't want to see a we single do. child have, killed. <laughs> Okay, here's a, here's don't a question want to see a you, you say, I agree with you. Here, I agree with you. We shouldn't blindly believe anything Hamas says. But why should we believe Correct. what your government says either? Your military spokesman on Monday pointed to an Arabic document in the basement of a Gaza hospital and claimed it was a guardian list on which every terrorist writes his name. But that was false. It was just a calendar with the days of the week on it. Your colleague in the prime minister's office, Ophir Gendelman, posted behind-the-scenes footage from a Lebanese short film and claimed it was Palestinians in Gaza faking their own injuries. That tweet is still up a week later. That is endless disinformation from your government, is it not? I disagree, and I think on the important issues... Look, I'll give you an example, Mehdi. No, no, Originally, no, no. we no, 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 estimated... No, 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 answer, no, answer your question. Allow me to answer your question. Okay. I'm answering your question directly, if you'll allow me. Uh, we originally said in the atrocious uh, uh, Hamas attack on our people on October 7th, we had the number at 1,400 casualties, and now we've revised that down to 1,200 because we understood that we had overestimated. We, we made a mistake. There were actually bodies that were so badly burnt, we thought they were ours. In the end, apparently, they were uh, Hamas terrorists. What we're, uh, what we're, uh, when with we make a mistake, we admit it. Short on time. Do why does that them? give you permission? Why does that give you permission to accept Hamas's numbers? I don't understand. I, I, I didn't ask about Hamas's numbers. I said to you that your military. No, but you were you were quoting to me before your, Hamas numbers, Mehdi. You were quoting entire, to me Hamas's the, numbers. Because the entire UN and the human rights community and the American intelligence community on Friday said they trust those numbers. But you're dodging my question, Mark. I'm not why sure that's you, true. Why I'm did not your sure military spokesman on Monday point to a calendar in Arabic and say these are the names of terrorists on them? That's false. Can you accept that here and now? I, 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 I'm not aware of the, uh, the, the incident. Let's put up the so image. I cannot we have the image. You have I, no I can't read Arabic. It doesn't help me. I have well, no comment. You, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the does incident. Does your spokesman but, uh, you, Hang on, I have a question, Maddie. You're a journalist. Have you made a professional mistake ever? Not no, intentionally, but have you made a professional I'm, I'm, mistake? I'm, exactly, and I own up to it. Have so you can made you own ever, up to the mistake? So can, can, not, so can you own up to so, the mistake? So now? if I made, I've up? made mistakes, you've made mistakes, but there's a difference between making an honest mistake and between Hamas that deliberately exaggerates numbers Understood. to suit its propaganda purposes. There's a huge Understood. difference. So it sounds like... It's like it, so, it sounds, so, so hold on, hold on. You said propaganda. Can we just deal with your colleague Ophir Gendelman's tweet? It's still up seven days later. Why has it not come down? It's a Lebanese short film. We can put it on screen. It's not Palestinians faking their own injuries. Can we own up to that mistake and take that down? Is that not propaganda? I, uh, uh, once again, I understand that that was also a mistake. And so why is it still uh, up seven I'll days speak later. to Offer about it if you like. I'll speak to Offer about it if you like. He's Great. a friend of mine okay. and a colleague. I quite like him. He's a good man. He's actually very effective. Why is he effective? Well, he's he speaks a uh, mother tongue, Lebanese Arabic. Tweet, Mark. I, Mark, I agree. Got... He made a mistake. But let's be clear. Right. Let's be clear. It's very good that we have someone who can speak Arabic on in the Arab networks to the to Great. the directly to Arab people, so they can hear Israeli opinions directly. I appreciate and Offer that. Is amazing at that. He's very Great. important. <laughs> OK, thank you, Mark. I know you're short on time, much more short than me, so I'm going to keep going. Let's talk about uh, war crimes. Human rights groups, as well as the UN, hum UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, have accused Hamas of committing war crimes. But they've also accused Israel of war crimes in Gaza, too, which you blame on Hamas. So I have a simple question for you. If Hamas gunmen were hiding out in a school in Tel Aviv or an apartment block in Haifa, would you be OK with the Israeli Air Force dropping bombs on those buildings, levelling them, killing the innocent Israelis inside in order to get the Hamas gunmen? Would you do that? But you're right in your question. Of course, Hamas hides behind uh, students and uh, children. That's the whole policy. That's why we've had the, the casualties we've had. Hamas deliberately embeds itself, as you said in your question, amongst civilians. 
the fact that they buried themselves under the Shifa hospital in, in, in Gaza City. Uh, not one hospital, but a whole series of hospitals. They well, took with respect, over you're not answering and my they question, turned them into military sure installations. Time. Would you bomb? I am answering your would you question. Bomb school, uh, would you bomb schools and would you bomb schools and houses in Israel if Hamas militants were believed to be under them and kill Israeli human shields in the process? We don't deliberately kill anyone. That's that's not a fair question. What we are trying to do is eliminate this. Okay. Threat, would you just accidentally ISIS, kill Israeli human shields? I'll ask you a very simple question. Uh, we would wouldn't want to accidentally kill anyone. We wouldn't accidentally. No, we Understood. wouldn't you accidentally want to, want to kill anyone. Understood. But can I tell would you, you when the West fought ISIS when the Israel? When the West, when the West fought uh, uh, ISIS in in uh, Fallujah and in Mosul, also there ISIS used uh, uh, human shields. They actually used a hospital, I believe, in Mosul. You probably know this as well as I do. I uh, do. And, and, and the West was fought. And the West was fought. Oh, but wrong, I, think I think it's actually, I, I think uh, America uh, did the right thing. You had to defeat these to brutal again. terrorists. Would you apply and, the But you're saying to me, in Israel, it's a simple question. You ask, we wouldn't allow them. We wouldn't allow them to take over a school in the first place. We'd send in special okay, so forces and we'd, we'd take out the terrorists. No, I know you're over on. You're, you're I out did of time. answer I your ask... question. I did answer your question. I did answer your question. You, you Why did you say I didn't answer your question? Did you didn't answer. I didn't did answer it the way. I didn't answer it in the way you wanted me to answer it. That's the problem. I didn't answer it the way you wanted me to answer it. We would send in special forces. And we would neutralize the terrorists. That's what we've done in the past. You know we've done it that way. Yes. Last question for you. You've got ministers in your government, I have to ask this question, Amichai Eliyahu, who said Israel should consider dropping a nuclear bomb on Gaza, which would kill over two million people. He's still in your government. Avi Dichter, another member of your government, went on TV and said this is Gaza Nakba 2023. And your boss, Benjamin Netanyahu, invoked Amalek, which was a biblical call for killing every man, woman and child. Mark, do you understand why that cannot be heard as anything other than calls for genocide or ethnic cleansing around the world? So, will you allow me to answer? Of course. Number one, that minister was reprimanded by the Prime Minister, uh, uh, Eliyahu, and he was told uh, very forthrightly, he's suspended from the government, and if he makes any statements like that again, he's fired. On the Avi Dichter, I think I actually agree with what he said. The Nakba, the tragedy that was brought upon the Palestinians in 1947-48 was because of an extreme irresponsible leadership that wasn't willing to compromise. And Hamas is doing the same thing to Palestinians in Gaza. Terrible. And if they are creating a catastrophe, it's because of Hamas. And on the third point, Amalek was known in Jewish history, and I'm sure you know this, that they attacked from behind. They killed the women and the children and the, 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 the people who were sick, who couldn't walk quickly. That's why Amalek is, is, is in the Bible, is, is, is so no, the condemned, call because is, they attacked sorry, the Mark, innocent. I've got to you no, no, the I know my Bible, Don't tell me I don't know my Jewish history. Well, I know I my Jewish you. history. Go and attack uh, the uh, Amalek. Can... Do not spare them. Put to death men, women, and children. Is that what you're doing in Gaza? That's what the prime minister no, 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 no. He was describing, first of all, no one in Israel is calling for women and children to be killed on the contrary. Uh, how can you well, say your heritage a minister did. Really... He said nuke Gaza. No, 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 no. He, what we have said is we're going to wipe out Hamas, and we are going to wipe out Hamas. But we make a clear distinction between Hamas and the Palestinian civilians of the Gaza Strip, who are in many ways Hamas's, uh, 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 Hamas oppresses them. Uh, Hamas might want to kill Israelis, but the way Hamas treats the civilian population of Gaza, I'm sure you yourself will admit that they deserve better than that terrible Hamas terrorist regime. But on that note, uh, I have to. We we're out of time. Well, I'll give you one very straightforward last yes or no question for you. Joe Biden wants a two state solution in the Middle East. He wants it sooner rather than later, he says, to get peace in the Middle East. Does your government, does Prime Minister Netanyahu, support a two state solution? Yes or no? I, I think we're, it's a time now for war, it's a time for victory. And when that's over, with Hamas defeated, with Hamas destroyed, when, you, when you've taken out the most extreme enemy of peace, that'll create room, I think, for more moderate and pragmatic voices to fill the vacuum, and that'll be good for peace. So that's a yes or a no on a two-state solution? I gave you a good answer, I thought. Ambassador Mark Regev, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Mehdi.